What's going on, Bay? Today we are checking out how to make an image parallax waterfall effect with GSAP in Webflow. We see I'm holding down the scroll here and we've got things moving at different speeds. You'll notice that the smaller images are scrolling a little bit faster and the bigger images are scrolling a little bit slower. So it's just a really nice effect, something that you can add to maybe like a gallery section, but let's hop into Webflow and then we'll check out the code. Hey there, Web Bay. All right, here we are in Webflow. I will draw your attention first to section waterfall. Now this is what's encapsulating everything that we need for this component to take effect. So we see the main thing we have here is we set in position relative. And why are we doing that? Well, we're doing that because waterfall underscore sticky has position sticky with the top value set to zero. What this does is that as I scroll, it makes that everyone is a flower div stick to the top. And we'll also notice that this thing is taking up the entire space, right? So if we come here and then come down to our waterfall underscore layout, we see that has a min height of 100 dynamic viewport heights. It's what's making it take up the entire space of our viewport there. And then we just chucked in an H2 in there so that we have some content for the user to read and emphasize while we're going through our scroll interaction. Okay, speaking of that interaction, we need a way to trigger all that code. We're using GSAP scroll trigger today. And you'll see here, I've got an embed called waterfall code. And if I open up the settings here, Right now, I'm just loading this from my local development server, but when you get this clonable, I'll have all the code pasted in here so that you could just copy and paste section waterfall directly into your project if you wanted to do that. Okay, next let's look at how we're getting these images on the page. Now we see we have waterfall underscore images here. And if I open this, then we have waterfall grid, and this is just set to be display grid. I've got eight columns and six rows. And what I'm doing with each image is I'm setting a ratio for it to be one to one so that it's always a square aspect ratio. And then I'm just using the manual position setting here to make sure it takes up the same number of rows as columns. So we look at this first image, it's three by three, this one here, two by two, this one, one by one, here we have two by two. And then I'm just repeating that in all these other image grids. And we have three of these waterfall image sections to scroll through. So that's how we're doing scroll. That's how we're getting images on the page. Our code specifically is going to look for this class waterfall image, and we're going to apply a scroll trigger animation based on that. So let's go ahead, publish this project and check out how the code works. All right, here in our code, we are first going to import GSAP library as well as the scroll trigger plugin. Then we're going to register that plugin. We call gsap.register plugin and pass the name right there. So that's easy enough. We've got gsap all set up to use now. I'm also going to define this function get y. This is like a helper function that's going to help us get the speed value based on the size of our element. So we can see here, it's a function, we're naming it get y, and we're passing a parameter here called element. And you'll see when we create our GSAP tween later, how we're actually passing that parameter. All right, so let's do some math. We're going to first define a variable called height, and that's just asking how tall in pixels our element is based on this property client height. Next, we'll define three variables or constants really. And we see that max scroll speed and min scroll speed are negative values. We want our parallax effect to kind of be like the images are floating up faster than scroll and some are moving faster than others. And then we have a reference height. And this is just a value to like use as our basis. You could adjust any of these as you want to get the values that you want. Okay, next we're going to adjust the speed factor based on height relative to that reference height. So here's the big math equation. We are just taking max scroll speed. We're adding that to the image height divided by the reference height. And we're multiplying that by our min scroll speed minus our max scroll speed. So then we'll take the speed factor and just console log it with the height so that we can see kind of based on how tall an image is, what speed factor this function is putting out. And then we'll return the speed factor so that we can use it in our GSAP tween. Speaking of GSAP tweens, let's start that now. So we want to select all of those items with the class waterfall underscore image, and then we're gonna loop over each one. So we'll use our for each function, which gets access to each image in that list. And then we're going to make that GSAP tween. So we're saying GSAP.2, and that gets two arguments, the element we're gonna animate itself and the tween variables that go in this object right here. So let's define those now. So we're going to set our Y value to whatever is output by our get Y function, passing that image. Remember, we're looping over that. And then we will set the ease to none. Anytime I'm using scroll trigger, I pretty much don't ever use an ease here. Always have it on none because we want the ease to feel more like it's tied to the user's scroll. All right, next we'll add our scroll trigger property here and that gets its own options inside of this object as well. And we're going to pass the trigger. The trigger is the image itself. We want this 
scroll trigger animation happen when that image starts coming into view and to exit when that image is out of view. So let's take a look at like the camera here. If this was the image and it's coming through the viewport, we want it to start when the top of the image is at the bottom of the viewport. And we want our animation to end when the bottom of the image is at the top of the viewport. So how do we do that? Well, we use the start and the end properties in GSAP. So we see top of image, bottom of viewport, bottom of image, top of viewport, boom, scroll trigger done. And then finally, we're gonna set scrub to one. And that takes it like one second for the image to catch up to where it's calculated it needs to be. So it gives us a nice little easing factor there. Now that's all the code that we need to write. So let's save and run this thing and see what we get. All right, we're scrolling now. Everyone is a flower and we can see we've got our images parallax kind of waterfalling up and the smaller ones are going faster than the bigger ones. So it looks like we've got this thing all hammered out. Now I'm gonna bring up the console here, come over to the console. We can see we're console logging object, object, object. If I open one of these, we'll see the height and the speed factor. If I just refresh, we're gonna see them all without actually having to open objects. So scrolling down here, you can see the bigger ones, the height of 601 gets a speed factor of 50. So not actually negative. So this one's actually like s slowed down rather than accelerated up in the upward direction. But we can see that these smaller items like 190 have a negative 190 speed factor. That's again in the up direction. If you like this video, then you should check out my other GSAP animation on supercharged sticky scroll sections. Very similar, we're using position sticky and GSAP tweens to make a really interesting kind of card shuffling or card stacking effect. So definitely check that out and I will see you in the next video.